thank God for all that the Lord is doing and how God is moving so richly in this experience. And we are grateful for the hand of God in the house. If you would go with me to Matthew, the 11th chapter, Matthew, the 11th chapter, 28th verse, Matthew 11, 28. Thank God for what God is not just doing in the house, but what God is doing right there in somebody's house. For all that are watching us, whether you're watching us on your computer, your laptop, your phone, your TV set, whether it's on Roku or Apple TV, Fire TV, YouTube, whatever, the platform. Uh, we thank God that just as we are feeling the presence of the Lord here inside, we believe you're feeling the presence of Almighty God right there where you are. And we give God glory for what God is doing in your life, even right now. And I thank God that God is not relegated uh, to have to be inside the four walls, but I thank God that God can move in the four walls of your living room, four walls of your kitchen, four walls of your job. That God can move and you can feel the presence of the Lord even right there. Matthew, the 11th chapter, 28th verse, Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. It reads, as says, Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 28th verse, says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let me focus on that 28th verse. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Brothers and my sister, I ask that you would join me in a word of prayer as we share on this harmonic subject today. Truth is, I'm tired. Truth is, I'm tired. Come on, let us look to the Lord God. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you, God, for your hand and for your power, your grace and for your love. Now, God, grab a hold of this, your servant. Use me to your honor and to your glory. Because, God, truth is, I'm tired. God, we thank you, God, that you have everything we need in this house today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. My brothers and my sisters, Sister Tamala Man, Sister Tamala Man has a song that many of us we love called Take Me to the King. And in this song, Take Me to the King, she has some very familiar lyrics to us. But uh, sometimes, you know, we can sing lyrics, but not necessarily totally internalize them. Uh, but I think that one of the reasons that this song has really caught the way it's caught is because her lyrics really mean something. And folks can often feel themselves in the lyrics. Uh, one of the parts of the lyrics says, truth is, I'm tired. Options are few. I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out, hurt, and abused. I can't fake what's left to do. Truth is, I'm weak. No strength to fight. No tears to cry, even if I tried. But still my soul refuses to die because one touch will change my life. Take me to the king. Is there anybody here that that song can resonate with you? Is there anybody here that knows what it's like to be tired? Is there anybody here who knows what it's like to feel like your options are few? Is it anybody here that feels like you're trying to pray, but you don't feel like God is hearing your prayer and the prayers are bouncing off of your ceiling? Is there anybody in the, that, that feels all churched out and that church as regular can't do it for you, but you really need to feel the power of God? Is there anybody here who came in here just a little bit tired? And, and, and you can say, truth is, I'm tired. And the reason you came to church was not because you want to wear your cute outfit. The reason you came to church was not so that folks could see you. The reason you came to church is because you needed to get to the king. Have I got somebody up in here? Have I got somebody up in here like Sister Tamela that believes that one touch can change your life? I don't know about you, but every now and then, Lord have mercy, I get to the place where I have to admit truth is I'm what? 
I'm tired. Uh, the, I, I, while well, well, uh, the Lee family, the Lee family, uh, all of us had COVID a uh, couple the last couple of weeks. All of us had COVID. When we found out, I, it was a book I started to read, a book called Resilient by Brother John Eldridge. Uh, in this book called Resilient, Brother John Eldridge is talking to those of us who feel a bit tired. In this book, Resilient, he's uh, dealing with us. And, and it's interesting the way he frames it because what he says is that the truth is that we are all tired. The truth is that globally we are all in a moment that we are all tired uh, because the reality is that we have all come up out of a global trauma. Uh, really, we're not out of it. We're still in it. Amen, somebody. That The pandemic has been a global trauma in which millions have died, in which uh, we have spent time locked in and sequestered. And, 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 the, and the reality is that many of us have been worn down by the moment uh, that he talks about the fact that because we've dealt with a global trauma uh, that we have to come to grips with the impact that trauma can have on a person's life and trauma can wear you down and you can feel a little tired. Uh, the interesting thing for me, Reverend Bill, reading Brother Eldridge is that Brother Eldridge, I think he plates a, a great uh, argument. I believe that he has a great point. I believe that his uh, conversation about trauma and the global trauma of the pandemic is significant. Uh, but, but for me, he missed some pieces. For me, he missed some pieces because he was not writing from my context. My context as a black person in America uh, was that the pandemic was just one trauma in the bits of a whole bunch of traumas. Have I got a witness in the house today? Uh, the, the, at the time that we were sitting there stuck on the inside, we had to deal with the fact that a police was kneeling on our necks, amen somebody, and had to deal with the fact that day after day we were seeing videotape after videotape of brothers and sisters who were being killed by the ones who were supposed to be protecting them. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but that's trauma, that, that we should not normalize what it means to be able to look at people being shot and killed that look like us at the hands of the ones who are there supposed to protect us. Uh, th that trauma on top of pandemic trauma, truth is I'm tired. Uh, but not just that, but then I had to deal with four years of Trump. Amen, somebody. I had. Uh, if it's not enough to be black in America and deal with the microaggressions of racism that we feel all the time, then we get a president who allows it to be overt aggressions. A president who allows white supremacists starting white supremacist organizations to jump to the forefront. And so instead of us dealing with microaggressions, we've got to deal with uh, uh, overt aggressions. Truth is, I'm what? I'm tired. That if it wasn't for Trump and if it wasn't for that, I got to deal with folks shooting each other in our own communities. That I've got to deal with uh, not just the police killing us, but us killing us. I've got to deal with the fact uh, that it's not safe for children to play at our playgrounds. I've got to deal with the fact that I've dealt with too many mamas and daddies who had to bury their children instead of their children bury them in their old age. That there's trauma after trauma after the truth is... I'm tired. Uh, but not just that, but then gas prices is like a daggone car note. Amen, somebody. And, 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 and you've got to deal with the inflation and, and it's so much. The truth is, I'm tired. Uh, but then if I deal with all of that, then I got to deal with just what's happening in my own individual life. Anybody, you got some own stuff happening in your own life? Uh, that for all the stuff and all the trauma that you're dealing with in the world, uh, but then you've got to deal with family drama. Amen, somebody. Then you've got to deal with parental drama. That you've got to deal with baby mama, baby daddy drama. That you got, got, Anybody know what I'm talking about? You've got to deal with drama on your job, backstabbing on your job. That, that it's hilarious to me uh, that you're not even in the physical building. They're still stabbing you in your back on the Zoom. Amen, somebody. The truth is, I'm tired. Uh, but I've come by my brothers and my sisters because I realized that the church is a place for tired people. I, I realized that Sunday service is a place for us to come. And if I look at this scripture here, you find Jesus. And I'm glad this scripture is Jesus. I'm glad that these are the red letters. It says, Jesus, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Uh, I've come by to let you know that I don't care how tired you are, uh, that there's a fix for what you're going through. Uh, I don't care how, how tired you are. Don't you give up too early uh, because Jesus has what you need. That Jesus said, come to me and I will give 
you rest. One of the first things I believe you've got to understand, uh, if you're going to understand and if you're tired, is you've got to know what kind of tired you've got. Turn to your neighbor and say, what kind of tired are you? What kind of tired are you? Uh, you there are different kinds of tired. In the, Reverend Bill, when I was young, I just thought there was one kind of tired. That when I went and I played somewhere, when I went and I hung out with the friends, when I went and I did stuff, I came back and I was tired. Amen. Somebody I would go and take me a nap. That, that was a kind of tired. But uh, as you grow a little bit along your journey, as you get a little bit older, you understand there's a few different kinds of tired that you can go through. One, you can be physically tired. Turn to your neighbor say physically, physically, uh, that you can be physically tired. The one, you can be physically tired, and when you're physically tired, uh, that, that can uh, be dealt with uh, because, well, you can be physically tired, one, because you've overexerted yourself, amen, somebody, or two, because you can be sick, two, you can be sick. That what, what I've come to learn in dealing with COVID is that COVID, the kind of tired I had as a result of COVID was called COVID fatigue, amen, that my body was tired because my body was trying to fight a fight for me against some microbes that were on the inside of me and therefore my body was tired. It's called fatigue. Amen, somebody? Oh, but there's a different kind of tired you can get when you've just been hanging out too long. Anybody ever partied all night long and had to go to work in the morning and was trying, I, I, not this section over here, but I know some of y'all over here did. Amen, somebody? That you partied all night long and then went to work the next morning and you was what? tired. Amen, somebody. And, and that's because of lack of sleep tired. Amen, somebody. You've over you've done too much tired. I, and I've come by to let you know that when you have physical tired, uh, that some of the things you do to deal with that um, is to get some sleep. Some of the things you deal with dealing with physically being tired is uh, shaping your nutrition regimen better. You've got to feed yourself to fuel yourself. Amen. Sometimes you're tired because you're not getting the right nutrients. You're not getting the right vitamins in you that you're body is saying that we need something more to go along this journey. That, that, that I, I don't care what you say or who tells you. Don't you fall into the whole Instagram kind of folks who, who talk about you don't need no sleep and all you got to do is work 24-7. But everybody needs to get some sleep. Amen, somebody? Or, or you'll be physically tired. The first is physical tired, but the second thing, the second kind of tired is mental and emotional tired. Has there ever been a time in your life that you had a tired uh, that sleep couldn't fix? Have I got a witness in the house today? Right, that, that, that you can be uh, mentally and emotionally tired. And that's because you've got stuff walking out up here and in here that you've got to work through. That the, the, the stresses, the traumas, the issues of this world have been wearing you down in such a way uh, that it's got your mind and, and, and your heart uh, are doing stuff with you. Uh, uh, old Scarface, uh, 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 back in the day, uh, the ghetto boys, well, Scarface would say, my mind is playing tricks on me. Anybody ever got so tired your mind what was playing tricks on you? That's mental and emotional. Emotional tired, amen. Anybody ever been heartbroken and heartbroken and, and, and because your heart was heavy and your heart was broken that, that you were emotionally tired, tired of crying, tired of the frustration, tired of the back and forth, tired of the issues of the fact uh, that they uh, say they love you but they don't act like they like you and the fact of the matter is you know you ain't got no business being with them because they're not good for you but you love them, amen somebody. Uh, that sometimes you've got mental and emotional tired. And the thing is that for mental and emotional tired that you should do what you did with physical tired. You need to get some sleep that you need to make sure your diet is good. Uh, but you can also get a good therapist. Amen, somebody. A good therapist can help you to work through some of that stuff. You can have a talk with some accountability partners to help you through. Uh, that, that you can navigate some of the things that are happening mentally and emotionally for you. But also you can throw yourself a closure party. Amen, somebody. Anybody? ever had to throw yourself a closure party that you never should wait for somebody else to give you closure. Amen somebody. I'm the one doing the closing of the door around here. Have I got somebody in the house today that knows that if I need closure and you can't give it to me, I give it to myself. Turn to your neighbor and say neighbor, don't you let them keep you all jacked up in your heart uh, but you need to get you some friends together and have you a closure party and say it's over now. <laughs> Mental and emotional tired, but the third kind of tired, you can have physical tired, you can have mental and emotional tired, but the third kind of tired is soul tired. 
Uh, it's a rough thing to be soul tired. Uh, because when you're soul tired, uh, that's when not just you're physically tired, not just you're mentally and emotionally tired, uh, but the fact is that you're tired with God. Is there anybody here ever been soul tired? Sometimes grief can get your soul tired. Sometimes when you're disappointed because God didn't answer a prayer, it can get your soul tired. And sometimes dealing with the disappointments of life can get your soul tired and you can feel like what? That I keep praying, but God, where are you? I, I, I'm tired on the inside. That, 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 that as much as I try to pray, God, I don't feel like my prayers are doing anything. I'm, I'm soul tired. The scripture uh, talks about uh, how Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, but I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. It's interesting to me that Jesus didn't just talk about giving you physical rest. Jesus didn't just talk about giving you mental and emotional rest. Jesus talked about you finding rest for your souls. And it's important because you can be physically tired but still be soul feel all right. And you can be mentally and emotionally tired, but still things be okay with you. And it'll help get you through. But you've got to make sure. I, I, I was looking at, 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 at the Dr. King uh, in, in the middle of the Montgomery bus boycotts. In the middle of the Montgomery bus boycotts, the Dr. King uh, talks about dealing with Mother Pollard. Mother Pollard was about 72 years old, and, and she wasn't taking the bus to work. She was walking to work. And Dr. King was trying to tell Mother Pollard, Mother Pollard, you can get a pass. You're old. You're older, ma'am. And for health reasons, it's okay for you to to take, uh, the, the, take the bus. Uh, but Mother Paula said, no, 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 I'm not taking no bus. She said, my feet are tired, but my soul is rested. Yes. Uh, somebody here, you've got to get to a place in which you can get your soul to be rested. You've got to get to a place that no matter what's going on around you, no matter how hard you're working, no matter how hard you labor, no matter how crazy they're acting, that your soul is still rested because uh, you can be mentally and emotionally tired, you can be physically tired, but I need you to know you can still get a prayer through. I need you to know that you can still say, I must tell Jesus uh, all of my troubles uh, that I cannot bear these burdens alone. Is there somebody in the house today uh, that knows that just a little talk with Jesus uh, will make it all right? Uh, that when your soul is rested uh, then that means that you can get through whatever you've got to get through. Uh, I don't care how hard it gets. Uh, I don't care how hard you got to run. Uh, I don't care how much they're trying to mess with your mind. Uh, but when your soul is rested, uh, you can still get a breakthrough. Uh, is there anybody in the house today uh, that you need to get a breakthrough? Uh, that you came in here and you said, truth is, I'm tired. Uh, but I've come by to let you know a breakthrough uh, is still on the way. Uh, that I've come by to let you know my soul uh, ain't just rested. Uh, but my soul is anchored uh, in the Lord. Uh, and no matter what the storm is, uh, no matter what the challenge is, uh, no matter what the situation situation is. A health issue can come my way, but my soul is rested. Grief can come my way, but my soul is rested. Problem on my job can come my way, but my soul is rested. And I can be grieving and still tell my loved ones, we gonna get through this, because my soul is rested and God is still on the throne. Got to know what kind of tired you are. I'm almost done up out of here. The second thing is, don't be a camel. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be a camel. It's interesting to me. Uh, Jesus talked about, uh, uh, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Uh, I, I was sitting there in that book by John Eltheridge, uh, a resilient. Uh, interesting thing about that book was he talked about camels. He talked about the difference between camels and horses. I had to look up a little bit about camels and talked about the fact that, you know, camels can travel 160 miles with no water. I'm talking about the camels, uh, the hump in their back is fat deposits. And, and what happens is when they drink water, they can drink 
40 gallons of water in one setting. And when they drink water, it, it, their body is able to store the nutrients it needs and to be able to deal with and feed off of that as it's going along the journey. I didn't know a camel can run 25 miles an hour. Amen, somebody. A camel uh, can hold uh, hundreds of pounds of weight. In other words, a camel often is used as a beast of burden. Amen, a camel uh, oftentimes, especially the, uh, the ones that, that are in the, 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 the um, that are in the desert, uh, a camel uh, can be able to walk through the desert because of the way its feet are. It's just got two toes, amen, so it won't sink in the sand. And a camel uh, can walk in the worst conditions, whether it's the worst hot or the worst cold, and it can go for days and weeks and months without a drop of water. A camel uh, can do something. Somebody, uh, you've been doing it like a camel, that you ha have been working and moving in the midst of some desert situations. You've been handling some heavy burdens. You've been rocking and rolling when it did not seem like there was anything to sustain you. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Anybody here know what it means? That you don't have the luxury of getting tired. You don't have the luxury of stopping it. The, 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 yeah, the other parent may not be showing up in these kids' life, but I don't have the luxury of not showing up in these kids' life. And if I got to work two, three jobs, my babies is going to be taken care of. Have I got somebody that knows what I'm talking about here today? I got somebody who knows that I, I don't have quit in me. Amen. Somebody that I don't have quit in me that I can't quit uh, because I don't have the luxury of quitting because too many people are, are going to uh, uh, deal with issues if I quit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and, and that's a strength. Amen. Somebody that is a strength to be able to have that kind of, of stick-to-itiveness to be able to keep on fighting and to be able to keep on going. But sometimes uh, the devil can use your strength to be your weakness. Uh, because the writer said, Lord have mercy, uh, the difference between camels and horses is that a horse uh, can carry loads and a horse can go for distances. But a horse can't do it like camels. A horse needs water and a horse needs stuff. But the thing, the difference in a camel and a horse uh, is that while a horse can't go as long as a camel, uh, when a horse gets tired, uh, you'll know it's tired. Uh, when a horse gets tired, uh, a horse will slow down. Uh, when a horse gets tired, a horse will walk slower. When a horse gets tired, a horse will stop. But the thing about a camel is a camel will never let you know it's tired. The challenge with a camel is that the camel will keep on walking and then die. <laughs> you see, a horse, Lord have mercy, uh, will get tired, uh, and you can understand it needs some help. Uh, but a camel won't ask for no help. Uh, a camel will keep carrying the burden. Uh, a camel will keep carrying uh, whatever it's carrying. Uh, a camel will keep moving uh, without any sustenance. Uh, a camel will keep uh, uh, making it happen. Uh, but the challenge is, uh, because a camel don't have quit in it, uh, a camel will work itself, uh, and then then just die right where it is. Uh, don't you be a camel. Uh, the devil is a liar. Uh, I know you've got to make some things happen, uh, uh, but Jesus said, uh, come unto me, uh, all you who are weary uh, and heavy laden, uh, that I know you've got some things to carry. Uh, and I'm not telling you to stop, uh, but I'm telling you, you don't have to do it uh, all by yourself. Uh, you don't have to do it uh, all by yourself, uh, but Jesus Jesus said he'll walk with you and he'll talk with you and he'll tell you that you're his own. Don't be a camel. But the third thing that we up out of here, Reverend Bill, we got communion to get to is come as you are. Turn to your neighbor and say, come as you are. The reason I like this scripture is because Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burden. Uh, he doesn't say that you've got to work out your burdens before you get to me. He doesn't say you've got to deal with your baggage before you get to me. He doesn't say you've got to deal with your issues before you get to me. He doesn't say you've got to deal with your pity party before you get to me. He doesn't say that you've got to deal with your financial challenges before you get to me. He doesn't say you've got to deal with your family situations before you get to me. He says, come to me, Lord have mercy, you who are weary and burdened. In other words, come as you are. When we started Community of Hope in the Legend Nightclub, 
love. Uh, we decided from the very day that we started, uh, this was going to be a come as you are church. Uh, that we realized there were too many burdens uh, keeping people up out of church. Uh, that everybody wanted some churches to have to be uh, that you dressed a certain way. Uh, but the reality is uh, that in here you got folks who want to come in a suit and they can come in a suit and be jiggy with it. Amen somebody. Uh, or you can come in some shorts and be alright with it too. Amen somebody. Uh, because you can come as you are. Uh, that we thank God for the suit uh, and we thank God for the sweatpants. Amen. Uh, but we thank God for you to come as you are. Uh, you got enough challenges going on in your life uh, to have to jump through hoops to get to church. Uh, it was hard enough uh, for you to get them four kids together in the morning uh, and get them in the car. Uh, and then the car got car trouble uh, and ended up calling an Uber uh, just to get yourself to the house of the Lord uh, for us to be looking at you crazy because uh, you ain't dressed the way we want you to be dressed. Uh, but the house of the Lord uh, is a place to come. Lord have mercy uh, as you are. Uh, is there somebody up in here uh, that's grateful that you can come to God uh, as you are uh, with all of your challenges? Uh, you can come to Jesus uh, with all of your issues. Uh, you can come to Jesus uh, with all of your proclivities. Uh, you can come to Jesus uh, with all of your challenges. Uh, you can come to Jesus uh, just as you are. Uh, I like the old hip writer uh, to say, I came to Jesus uh, as I was, uh, weary, uh, wounded, and sad. Uh, but I found in him uh, a resting place, uh, and he uh, has made me glad. Uh, somebody in the house today, I've come by to let you know, if you came in here a little tired, if you came in here a little weary, if you came in here a little wounded, if you came in here a little challenged, if you came in here a little heartbroken, if you came in here a little broke, if you came in here with challenges in your life, you're in the right place at the right time, because this is the filling station, this is the place where Jesus Jesus said he'll get you all right. Have I got somebody in here that will give God a praise and say, fix me, Jesus. Have I got anybody in here that will give God a shout and say, Jesus will work it out. Somebody give God glory. Somebody shout, take me to the king. Somebody shout, if I get one touch, that's all that will matter. And everything, I I said everything, I said everything, I said everything is going to be all right. I wish I had a church in here that would give God some praise for the breakthrough. I wish I had a church in here that give God a shout for the turnaround. I wish I had a church in here that could give God glory right now and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. In other words, God, I give it over to you. And if you'll take it, everything is going to be all right. Come on, somebody give God glory in the house today. If you know it's going to be all right, somebody give God praise in the house today. If you know it's going to be all right. I didn't say you know how it's going to be all right. You just know that it's going to be all right. If I got somebody in here, are you crazy enough to believe that God can work it out and he's working it in your favor? Give God glory. Come on, won't you stand all over the church, all that are able? Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Whew. I don't know about you, but that's good news. I don't know about you, but that's something to praise about. I don't know about you, but hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Truth is, I'm tired. I'm done. 
worst thing in the world is to wait until your tank is past E to start looking for the gas station. Some of us, if we're honest, will pass E. But I've come by to give you some encouragement. You're in the filling station. There were churches in the region. Our own Dr. Folsom, our good friend, Pastor Bobby Manning. They decided during the pandemic to be a blessing to community and they took over eight gas stations and paid for everyone's gas. You could ride up, the gas was paid for. The gas station in this region, uh, that when Pastor Bobby Mann and the First Baptist Church of District Heights went, that right before they started getting the gas for people, the gas station changed the price and raised it. And as soon as they finished getting the gas for everybody, then the price went back to normal. Here's the moral of the story. When you come to the house of the Lord, the price was fixed a long time ago. And that would be something to shout about, a price that was fixed. But what the shout for is, and Jesus paid it all. That's why Jesus can say, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. The church, the house of God, is the filling station. I don't care how low you feel. You can get your fill here. And you don't have to pay. Because it's already been paid for. When I say all you've got to do is show up, I don't just mean in the building, for those of you all who are online. I mean, all you have to do is just get connected. Jesus can be like the AAA and come by your house and give you a fill up right there because you ran out of gas. Somebody, you barely made it here this morning. You barely turned on your computer. You barely turned on your TV. It was hard to get here this morning because truth is you're tired. If you're tired, just raise your hand in the house if you're tired. If you're tired. It's a lot of tired people. But you're in the right place. Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I want to pray for those who are tired right now. Hallelujah. Some of you, you're physically tired. Some of you, you're mentally and emotionally tired. Some of you, your soul is tired. But I've come by to let you know this infilling of the Holy Spirit can deal with any kind of tired you've got, any kind of tired you're working through. Let me pray for you right now. Reverend Bill, it's amazing to me. If y'all had seen me and Reverend Bill in the back, y'all would have been like, ooh, they some sad looking jokers. Because truth is, we was tired. Fact of the matter is, even though I've tested negative for COVID, the fatigue still wears on me. When we were riding in, I was telling Reverend Bill, man, I need to shorten up this sermon because I may not have enough energy to preach the whole thing. <laughs> if 
y'all got what I was thinking about getting, y'all might have got up to point one in a hoop, amen, somebody. But what happened when I hit the pulpit and just started to open up my mouth. It was the most interesting thing. Brother Phil and the voices had really blessed us during the sermonic and the spirit was moving. And he was extending. And I kept sitting in my seat. I kept sitting in my seat, one, because uh, the spirit was in a nice space. But two, because I just ain't feel nothing on me. And I was like, God, I need you to put something up on me. Because truth is, I'm tired. End up getting up because one of the things I understood was I couldn't sit there forever. So I just gonna have to go up whether I felt it or not. I got up. As soon as I started opening my mouth, I started getting filled. I started feeling a strength. I didn't know where it was coming from. Somebody, that's what God's gonna do for you. It's not going to make sense. It's not going to connect. Your situation will look like something different. But somehow God's going to give you everything you need. All you got to do is keep showing up and let God keep filling you. For all the tired people in the house, God, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you, God, for your people who can say like the song, truth is I'm tired. But I thank you, God, the song didn't just talk about what the issue was. Uh, but Sister Tamla pointed us in the direction and said, take me to the king. God, in the name of Lord Jesus, we lay your people at your feet today. Jesus said, come unto me, all the you that are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. We thank you, God, for rest. We thank you, God, for peace. I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. God, fill your people. The power of your Holy Spirit, restore unto them strength, not just physically, not just mentally and emotionally, but restore unto them strength in their soul. And I thank you, God. They shall be better than when they came in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, won't you give God a hand clap of praise if you receive that today? If you will continue to keep your seats, continue to stand, continue to stand. If you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've never accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. You've never said, Jesus, I want to give my heart to you. The Bible says that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If that's you, if you've never given your heart to Christ, and you know you need to today, whether you're here in the church, here in the sanctuary, or whether you're watching us uh, virtually, uh, today is your day, uh, either to give your life to Christ or you may already be saved, but you need a church home. Today is your day to make Community of Hope your church home. Or you just need to rededicate your faith. Today is your day to get reconnected with the Lord. If that's you, if you're in the house, just raise your hand. If that's you, if you're not saved and you want to give your life to Christ or you want to make this your church home, just raise your hand where you are. If you're online, uh, just type the words Hope Decision. Uh, you can click right there in the link right there, or you can just text us, Hope Decision, to the number 474747. Number 474747. Text one word, Hope Decision, and information will come to you so that we can follow up with you. Is there someone today? You're not saved. You need a church. Someone today. I know you're here. You're not saved, or you need a church. Just raise your hand. Is there someone today? You're not saved. You need a church. Today's your day. Today is your day. Community of Hope, I want you all to help me right here. I want you to help me right here.
I, I want you, when I say go, wait till I say go to ask your neighbor two questions. One, first question is, are you saved? The second question is, do you have a church? What's the first question? What's the second question? And if they answer no to either of them, or if they try to act like, you know, they just want to look the other way, ask them twice, amen? And tell them, look, it's nothing big, it's nothing crazy. We just want to make sure it's good with you. Because I don't want you to leave here still headed in the wrong direction. I want you to turn and find three folks and just ask them those questions. One, are you saved? Two, do you have a church? Tell them, I'll raise my hand for you. If they answer no to either of them, say, would you like to? You want me to raise my hand for you? Tell them, I've got your back. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. There's someone today. Just raise your hand. Someone today, you're not saved. You need a church home. Today's your day. This is your moment. Won't you come? God bless you. We see your hand right there. God bless you. God bless you. There's someone else today. Just raise your hand where you are. Someone else today. Someone else today someone else today. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise to these. God bless you. If I can have a minister go by over here where the hand was, over there by where the hand was, we're not even going to have them walk down. We're just going to have a minister be able to fellowship with them. Come on. And what I want you to do, those who raise your hand and even those, as a matter of fact, raise your hand one more time so a minister's minister I need one right here and minister's one right here. God bless you. Anywhere, anywhere else online we thank God for you we thank God for you just right in there say it's me it's me it's me it's me it's me so we can be praying for you those who raise their hand and anyone else who wants to in the house uh, I, matter of fact everybody just repeat this prayer after me say God I thank you y'all can say it louder than that say God online I don't hear you yet say God I thank you for Jesus who died for me and you raised from the dead that I could be saved. Please forgive me for my sins. I don't want to live that way anymore. And right now, I ask Jesus to come into my heart and be in control of my life. I want to live the way you want me to live and be the person that you've called me to be. So today, I thank you that I'm saved. I got a church home. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, somebody.